Hi, I'm Cliff, and this is my garage, and this is my saw stop professional cabinet saw, which just literally exploded. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the garage. And if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. So, a few minutes ago, I was doing just a simple job. I had a couple of pieces of wood. I was cross cutting them using my miter gauge on the table saw here. And, oh, by the way, this is a, an Incra 1000 HD miter gauge. Uh, absolutely hands down the best one I've ever used. I'm not even sure they make these anymore because this is probably 10 years old. Whatever the current model they make is, I'm, if it's if it's as good as this one, it's a fantastic one. I'll, I'll look it up and I'll try and give you a link in the video description down to, below to find this one or whatever its current equivalent is. Anyhow, I'm cutting along here and I, just as I've done hundreds and hundreds of times on this table saw using this miter gauge, and all of a sudden there's a moderately loud bang and my, my saw blade is gone. Now, if you're not familiar with the saw stop systems, they have a safety system where if it detects that it's cutting into what it believes is, you know, your hand, it ignites a small explosive charge down inside the saw, which drives an aluminum brake up into the blade, stopping it almost instantly and also yanking it down underneath the top of the saw. And uh, this is uh, their patented method or system that they've uh, invented. So I hear this pop, my blade is gone, and I realize that I've triggered the safety system. But I'm completely confused how I've done this because my hands or any other part of my body were nowhere near the blade. My right hand was on the handle of the miter gauge back here. My left hand was over the top on top of it, holding the, um, the wood in place. So my hand, nowhere near the blade. And so I start looking at it and I'm checking out the wood. There are no staples. There are no pitch pockets. There's nothing that could have been conductive enough to, to trigger the system. They're not wet. They're extremely dry. They're not pressure treated. I'm kind of at a loss. And I keep digging around and looking and I think maybe I found what happened and mm, it's my fault. In looking at the end here, I discovered that right here on this corner, the metal is much shinier and much smoother than any place else. Now I believe the real culprit here is my own adjustment. I have this miter gauge set to be fairly close to the blade. That way it supports the wood and prevents too much of blowout on the back side. And like I said, I've used it hundreds of times with no issues whatsoever. But I think based on the way it looks and kind of the way it felt when it was happening, it, which it happened very, very quickly. It yanks the blade down in a, literally a matter of milliseconds. I forget how many, but it's not long at all. So uh, based on the way everything felt, I think what happened is I was almost all the way through the cut when something slightly jammed that made the blade wobble and deflect. And when it did that, I had so little clearance on this side that it touched the aluminum blade of the miter gauge. Now, since my hand was on the miter gauge and this bar is, alu is aluminum, it's electrically conductive, I think that the computer in the safety system saw the signal and I believe the way it works is it puts like a charge on the blade and then if the charge is suddenly drained by a conductive material it looks at the waveform or the, the rate of decay or something and it knows the difference in signals between human flesh and something else. But I think since it was ultimately touching my hand it got the right signal and boom it triggered the safety system. So just for fun, let's take a look down in there and see what it looks like right now. 
Okay, so looking down in here, you can see where the brake has been thrown up into the blade. The blade has chewed its way into the brake, stopping it very, very quickly. Now, the cartridge and, and brake itself are obviously destroyed. So this is going to be interesting because now I get the experience of trying to remove this brake system and replace it. Don't really know how to do it offhand. Like I said, I've owned this for eight to 10 years now and I've never triggered the brake up until now. So the new cartridge brake are gonna cost me like 70 bucks or so, which really isn't all that bad considering that it's a totally proprietary part. Although at one point SawStop did have a program that if you actually had a brake trigger and you know it wasn't like on purpose, that they would replace the cartridge and brake for free. We'll see about that. My Woodworker 2 blade on the other hand is probably a goner and it was gonna cost me 150, 200 bucks to replace that. So best case scenario, I'm out 150 bucks. Worst case is closer to 300, but that's okay because I know that the system works the way it's supposed to. And I definitely get a certain peace of mind from having this safety system in my saw. Now I know there are people out there that are very against this system. And some of them, probably, probably the majority of them, have it have a thing against saw stop themselves because they've done some stuff that people think is kind of well not right for instance they tried to get the uh congress to pass a law requiring this technology in all saws and it um it was seen as a cynical marketing thing since they own the patent on it now i believe the patent is probably coming close to expiring but regardless even beyond that the system works and it works well. Like I said, I can take a great deal of comfort in knowing that it's there. And I know other people, their complaint is, well, if you were careful or if you weren't stupid, you wouldn't need this. I don't buy that because I know that you can simply have things go wrong. When I was in the Air Force decades ago, there was a fellow who lost part of his hand in an accident with a table saw, which was completely and totally not his fault. Some material that someone was moving fell on him while he was using the saw, shoving his hand forward into the blade and cutting off his index finger and his thumb. Now, uh, I don't think they were able to save it. He wasn't in my squadron or anything, so I never heard anything more about it. But regardless, that accident totally not his fault, would have been prevented by this kind of technology if it had existed back then. So that's it. I like it. I advocate it. If you don't want it, that's up to you. So that's it for today. I just wanted to make a quick video showing you guys how I more or less screwed up and cost myself 300 bucks. If you're a saw stop owner, be aware of this issue. I think we all know about not letting metal fences touch the blade, but in this case, it was a metal fence getting too close to a blade and a deflection problem. I never thought about the blade deflecting and hitting the, the, uh, the fence anyway. And so I'm gonna be backing off the crossbar of my miter gauge a little bit more in the future. What I'll ultimately do though, which I've been planning on for years, is to add a replaceable zero clearance fence extension like this one. As always, everyone, thank you so much for watching, liking, and sharing my videos. Speaking of liking, go down there, find that thumbs up button, give me a like on this video right now. It helps me out a lot in terms of getting YouTube to recommend my videos to other viewers. And if you're not one of my well, almost 1,250 subscribers now. Go down there, find that big red subscribe button and give it a click. Doesn't cost you a penny. It's not the same as the joining a channel, which does cost money. Subscribing to a channel costs you not a penny. And it also helps me out tremendously in getting visibility for my videos in YouTube searches. So go down there, find the big red button, give it a click. And once you subscribe, go down there, find that bell icon, it should be right next to the subscribe button, and give it a click. That turns on YouTube's notification system, and that way YouTube will let you know every time that I post new content from here in Cliff's Garage. I'll see you next time.